Hey folks, I'm gonna do a video which I never done before. It's gonna be a gameplay breakdown and uh, I want feedback, okay? So use the comment section, give me feedback of what you think about this type of video uh, and if it works and if you like it, then I can do more. I can eventually figure out how to pump up the quality of the video because I think it's not ideal. But anyways, I wanna guide you through what I did during the game and why I did that and I think this game pretty much validates what I said in my Northridge um, strategy video because I said that you should be picking your fights, not just rushing towards the enemy because in solo mode you're not gonna have like too much chance. I had a pretty let's say bad spawn because it was near the dam and I actually wasted some time killing this bot because I wasn't absolutely sure that this is a bot. Sometimes there are people spawning on this side of them. But then after killing the bot, I was heading towards the hotel and usually I'm picking the parking lot. So I did that. And after arriving, I had the assumption that somebody's already here, but I wasn't sure. So I started killing the bots. And then it was at this point where I knew that somebody is inside. So after, after killing this last bot, I decided not to push into the hotel from the front entrance. I just waited here for a second to kind of figure out what's going to happen and reload it, by the way. And then, instead of like rushing from the entrance, I wanted to do some... to basically distract them by throwing some nades and doing some noise and, uh, and, and not distract them, to confuse them. So. I threw one nade and I tried to understand how many enemies I'm facing. There was one footstep and then I think I saw two or three. You're gonna find out. I didn't watch this video since I played it, so you're gonna find out. There's one footstep and actually there was somebody there on the first floor. I didn't hit him, unfortunately, but definitely that was a player. And I wanted to nade and then <laughs> after unpinning <laughs> that nade, I already knew that I'm gonna miss that. But anyways, I did some um, some noise and instantly I got naded as well. So I revealed my position. I knew I'm not gonna be able to stay for here longer. And then if you check the footsteps, I identified three players in total. So what I did, I went to the back and I was running. So I had the assumption that they're gonna know that I'm running to the back of the hotel. So I, I, I had to play it smart. So what I did is that, I'm going to speed it up. What I did is that instead of rushing them, I stayed here for a moment, silently watching what's happening. And then I saw some footsteps, but I had no clue where they are coming from. So to check that out, I was jumping to the other side of the entrance. You're going to see that here to see whether they start shooting me or not. Nobody shot me. so. I had the assumption that they are not seeing me. And here's the first kill. That guy had no clue that I'm here. I think he, I think I think this guy didn't see me jumping and therefore he didn't rush me or such. He was actually surprised and then I chased him. It was an easy kill and I didn't go after the buddy because I was absolutely sure that one of the teammates is going to be around. There you go. There's a nade so I was like falling back. And if I remember correctly, I spent some time here. I was just listening of what's happening and um, reloading and such, trying to understand if they're gonna try to rush me or what's gonna happen. And then I wanted to kind of secure my loot. Again, I was jumping and then I went over to the other entrance. So you can see that this is the first entrance. I ran over to the other one and try to sneak to that location from from behind or actually I, I didn't want to sneak to that location I wanted to check if anybody is monitoring um, the, the guy I killed because when you kill somebody and um, the enemies are, are staying silent then most likely the that body is being like you know looked at from one of the angles so if you have an enemy squad don't run straight to the um, enemy player because most likely you're gonna get shot. So what I did is that I, at this point, I was very sneaky. I was very you know, silent. I didn't want to do any noise, basically trying to understand where they are, but I tried to get closer. 
and this is how I get to this point where something actually happened with my shoulder triggers. So just so you know, on Red Magic uh, we have the shoulder triggers. I can actually show you, not sure if you're going to see that, but on top of the phone we have two shoulder triggers and I'm using one of them. I'm using one of them to shoot, otherwise I'm not using them. But anyways, that shoulder trigger just, I don't know, stuck, got stuck or something. And as you can see here, there is a head in, in, in front of me in that tent. You can see the movement there. He doesn't see me, but I saw him. And I started shooting. I wanted to one tap, but then this happened. It, it kind of never happened to me, but in this game, <laughs> for some weird re reason, it just happened. Like, and, and I didn't hear the kill sound, so I knew that that guy is still alive. And since he didn't know where the shots were coming from, I was kind of lucky because, you know, I, I, I had a chance to reposition myself. So this is the part of the game where you kind of play that cat and mouse game where he knows that you are here, you know where the enemy is and basically the, the player who spots the other player first is going to win the fight. And then I, I think what he did is that he ran from one tent to, uh, to the other. Actually here I thought he's still there, but then I realized that I'm just dumb and that's not a player, it's just some kind of shadow or item. And uh, still, I was like surprised that they are not starting to shoot me or rush me. At this point, I actually had no clue where the enemy is, so I was almost like panicking for a second. So I was backing out and there was, there was a bot as well, which didn't make me happy because every time you shoot, you, you kind of reveal yourself. Anyways, I wanted to restart my attack. So I reloaded, painkillers, all kind of stuff, and then one more attempt. So I threw a smoke bomb just to see if if there is going to be any movement. Like if you see footsteps, then you can be absolutely sure that somebody is around. But nothing actually happened, which again didn't really make me happy. But I knew that somebody must be there. There was actually a nade coming. You can see here that there was actually a nade coming to this blue car here. I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, you you couldn't see or I couldn't see the the you know the nade itself, so it landed through the smoke. I was still under the impression that he must be somewhere here. So I was trying to get closer. I wanted to understand if that guy who threw the nade is like kind of near to that body. Or is he maybe hiding in the tent? And I got lucky. At this point, I got lucky because I see him through the car. It's actually a good angle. And I, I took the risk. I started shooting. And unfortunately, my shot didn't kill him. But, you know, when something like this happens, then don't hesitate. Never hesitate. Rush that person. Because this guy had almost like no chance. I think it was a headshot or chest or something, so I'm sure he was badly injured. And if you are badly injured, you have broken limbs or something, or low HP, then you're gonna start panicking, especially if you hear somebody else running towards you. So I was, I was at this point, I was absolutely confident, I was 100% sure that I'm gonna get the kill. And if you see what I did here, to be like even more, more, sure about the, the kill is that I, I jumped here like I jumped and then at this point I exactly knew where he is I there was no point like zooming or such it was just you know rushing and shooting him my positioning was much much better after having a kill first thing you want to do is to reload look around I was pretty confident that there is one more guy somewhere but I had no information. Maybe I was playing with, against randoms and the random guy just didn't care. Or maybe he saw two of his teammates dying. So he was like backing out. I don't know. But at this point, you should be super cautious, especially if you have two kills, two people just laying there because there might be somebody standing in the window. But fortunately, 
I actually had a pretty nice spot like behind that tent and I was I was like pretty much in a safe zone I would say it's really hard to like shoot somebody um, from the from the hotel who is like hiding where I was like here so I felt like it's okay starting to pick up stuff um, so I did that and while I was looting I was constantly trying to understand if there is another other player still it can be very confusing on this map and also on other maps when uh, bots start uh, respawning. So you also need to keep that in mind that even if you see footsteps, it may not be another player. It may be just the respawning bots. And what happened afterwards is that I started hearing shots. You're going to see that in a second. There you go. So there are the shots and uh, I was under the impression that that guy may be hiding in one of the rooms here on the first floor. I didn't know where, so I was also checking the, the second floor. Um, I definitely knew that somebody is there because of the shots, but I, I wanted to stay like focused and um, don't just do a stupid mistake. So what I did is I tried to sneak on that guy and then something very strange happened. This, <laughs> this is actually an interesting moment. So I, w I wanted to zoom and then somehow like the, the, that rope or something, the side of the tent that just blocked my, my zoom and I couldn't hit that. I think it was a bot, like looking at this, it was a bot running to the player. I don't think that was a player, but anyways, I would need to zoom in to find out. Anyways, I knew that somebody is in there, so. And then look what happened. I decided to go closer and maybe enter the hotel. And then I got shot from behind. And actually I was lucky that, that he didn't kill me. I had no clue where that guy is or where that guy came from. Maybe it was one of the teammates like trying to get behind me. I don't know, but luckily I had painkillers so I could keep running. I threw a smoke just to, you know, do some distraction. I started healing myself. And then the next thing is that you want to reposition because the enemy knows that you are here or he knew that I am here. But since he didn't rush me, I felt like it's okay to start healing. But I also wanted to monitor the, the hotel because I felt like another guy must be there as well. So I was like repositioning myself, going back to that area where we have the two bodies and then it's a bit of a coincidence but you're gonna see that that guy was trying to kill me <laughs> from where i killed the other guy so there you go th th this was the guy who was shooting um me in the back unfortunately he couldn't kill me and then at this point i knew that there's one more guy right because Somebody was shooting from the outside, but we heard shots from the inside, from the hotel. So I was just staying here because, again, I had no information, no clue. And then, out of the sudden, like, I started hearing footsteps. And he just became an easy target. I, I, I don't know what he was thinking, but he just ran and basically it was a free kill. And this is pretty much it. This is what I wanted to show you guys because I had four kills in this game and I'm sure they were in solo players. So it was at least one squad or eventually two squads. Doesn't really matter. And I killed all of them without actually getting hit or getting into like serious danger. And this is what I mean when I say that you should be trying to play in a sneaky way or in a strategic way silently because the chances of surviving if you play like this in solo mode are much higher compared to just if you just run and constantly reveal yourself so after this basically i just wanted to understand if there are any more players there weren't so i picked up everything i um, unfortunately there was no extract here um, in the in the hotel Although I got two dog tags, so it would have been nice. I had to run to the um, to the far 
extract. Timing was perfect because there were only four minutes remaining. So I just ran to the extract. And yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, I uh, I faced some 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 bots here. Actually, some you know elite bots. So I wasn't happy about that. It's not ideal if you're already like 40 minutes into the game and uh, 20 meters away or 30 meters away from the extraction, and then elite bots uh, pop up. But basically, then I could extract, and uh, the overall loot value was. Um, well, I close to 300,000 because I didn't have time to go into the hotel, check the saves, but still, 300,000 is, I think, pretty solid. It's a juicy loot. You shouldn't be always aiming for the 1 million. If I find a red item in this game by opening any of the saves, if I would have time, then this number would be up to 800,000. Or if I find two items, then it would be over a million. So usually if you get 300,000 or 400,000 without finding red items, that's actually, I think, pretty solid. Because in all of the games where I had like a million, I, I, I basically had at least one red item or a turmoil. So guys, leave me feedback on what you think about this video, like the, the gameplay breakdown. Did you enjoy it? Did I say anything that you know, made you think that you should be doing something differently? Did you learn something or was it like boring as hell? Any feedback is welcome as always. And um, as you know, I'm trying to get back to all of you. So if you leave comments, then please expect my reply. If you want to chat with me directly, then hop to my Discord. If you haven't already, then it's time to subscribe and actually let me grab the chance and, and, uh, and share with you guys that for most of the videos I publish, the number of returning viewers is higher than the new viewers. It makes me really proud because it, it means a lot to me. Basically, whatever I publish, it's being watched by other people who subscribe. But at the same time, I see that, I don't know, close to 80% of the viewers are not subscribed yet. So please do so. Please support me, please support my channel, especially if you want to see more gameplay videos, uh, tips and tricks, gameplay breakdowns or whatever. I'm always trying to come up with something that is unique and special and uh, is not like flooded on YouTube because like pro gameplay, if you want that, then you can check out Said, Monarch, Trashy, Kiwi, whoever. I'm not, I'm not like, you know, super pro. I'm like legend level, but I'm not legend 50 star player at all. Anyways, um, I think this was my longest outro ever. Have a nice day. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Shady out. Bye.